If you can hear us on Zoom, give us a thumbs up. Yep, okay, I see some. Okay, all right, perfect. We gonna bow our heads in prayer. Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you right now. Lord, we thank you for this is the day that you have made and all the rain, God, it only reminds us of your favor shining down on us, raining down on us, pouring out your blessings and your favor upon us, your children. Lord, we thank you for bringing us through this day, through all of the traffic and life's issues and work and what have you. God, nobody but you brought us all the way. And Father, each of us that have set aside this time to learn of you, Lord, I thank you for being the rewarder of our efforts. For you said that you are the rewarder of us who diligently seek you. So Lord, we thank you right now for the time to set aside we thank you for the avenues and the mediums of social media, Periscope and Zoom. Father, we thank you for keeping the connections clear. We thank you for giving us access to one another. But most importantly, all of us have access to you. And I thank you right now, God, for you feeding us, you filling our cups to overflow, you answering the questions that we didn't, that we may not have asked one another, but God, you're answering the questions in this class. You're bringing clarity to our understanding in this class. You're bringing understanding and wisdom to each of us from this class. In the name of Jesus, that we are stronger, that we're more rooted, and that we're more grounded for your glory in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God be the <coughs> for all that he has done. Hello, amen. We love you. Yes, we are at page 20. We're going to recap just a little bit from last week. We are in our book of spiritual maturity, um, God's plan for Christian service. We're in lesson five, lesson four, I'm sorry, lesson four, under self-control. Lesson one, title four. Oh, lesson one, title four, under self-control. And last week, um, the Lord bless, we were able to cover for the purpose of godliness, talking about self-control and the purpose of self-control is not just willpower and I can do it. It's for the goal of living a life that honors the Lord. And that's what letter A covered. We were talking about that it was truly an effort made on our part, but it's an effort made on our part to please the Lord, to live a life that pleases him. And in pleasing him, we enjoy the reward of a life that lived better. Um, we also went over a couple of scriptures, but mainly just reminding us that in everything that we do, our efforts are to please the Lord. A disciplined life for Christ is a life that is spirit-led and not flesh-led. Um, as we started this um, whole Bible study, we started with three things that the Lord had given us that has to be consistent in our growth, in our efforts, in our everything to walk this out. And that is being consistent, that is being intentional, and that is being disciplined. Those three things, if you all remember back, God had given us those at the beginning of this because those are, those are ingredients and efforts we have to apply in everything we do. So talking about self-control is just one more of those things that we have to apply. And again, um, the recap really from last week is a disciplined life for Christ is a life that is spirit-led and not flesh-led. If anyone have any questions um, in regards to last week or even coming up on tonight, you all that are on Zoom, you know how to um, tap the screen and raise your hand and pastor is paying attention, I'm paying attention. You can unmute yourself and come in and ask a question. Um, if you're on Periscope and you type it in, Maisha's monitoring that and we should be able to catch all the ways around. As we go forward, we are starting into page 21. Okay, amen. So um, <clears throat> we're on page 21 under B, all things, in all things. Yes. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25 says, And everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. Mm -hmm. They then do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Mm -hmm. One of the things that came to mind is that 
what this says is that these athletes um, exercise self-control or exercise the self-discipline in every aspect of their lives as they're preparing or getting ready for a, a, a contest. Right. Um, you think, and, and Yolanda and I was talking about this earlier today, athletes are disciplined in, in, in their sleep regimen. Right. You know, they're not up late at night because they know they have to get up early in the morning to train. So they're not out partying at night. They're not, you know, up just hanging out. They go to bed early because they're getting up early. Why? Because they're conditioning themselves and preparing themselves for whatever contest or, or sporting event they're, they're doing. Absolutely. They're disciplined in how they eat. Mm -hmm. You know, they're eating healthy. They're eating the right things, fruit, vegetables, uh, 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 proteins, and what whatnot. What they put into their body. Right. They're, they're conscious of they're not eating junk food or candy or, or sodas or things like that because they know that that is not helpful for their body as they're preparing for whatever uh, competition they're going to be in. Right. They're disciplined in how they work uh, and, and their exercise and their preparation. Like I said earlier, they get, you know, boxers, they get up early in the morning, mm -hmm. four o'clock in the morning, uh, and they're out doing road work, they're jogging and whatnot. I remember an old quote by uh, Muhammad Ali, he said, before I start performing in, in the lights, I'm up early in the morning, working out and training. So right. before y'all see me in the ring showing out, right. I'm already exercising, I'm getting up while y'all still sleep. I'm getting up doing my road work and this, that, and the other. Right. Why? Because he's preparing himself for a competition. Right. With this um, uh, COVID-19 stuff right. that's going on, everybody under these stay-at-home orders, you still have athletes. You know, right. they, they, they postponed the basketball season and the, the hockey season until further notice. Well, these athletes, basketball players, hockey players, ain't just sitting around chilling. You, you see they're putting out videos that they still working out. They're still, you know, LeBron James put out a video. He's still lifting weights. He's still doing cardiovascular working out. He's still doing what he needs to do to keep his body in shape, to keep him, his body disciplined so that when the season starts back up, they can just keep rolling with it. You know, they're, not, they're not laying back, oh, we ain't got nothing to do. They're postponed, so I'm going to sit back and chill. And slack off. And slack off. Right. The football season, they, they went through their entire football season. But you have football players in the off season who are still working out, who are still exercising, who are still doing what they do because they understand right. that soon and very soon the season going to start up again. Right. So, they're, so they're doing all these things as a way of disciplining, disciplining their, their bodies. Um, it goes on to read, the athlete whom Paul describes exercises control in all things. Yeah. There is no area of his training in which he is slack or undisciplined. Right. If athletes can do all of this, denying their bodies what their, what their bodies desire uh, for, for, for in pleasure or, or glory, how much more should we discipline ourselves for the purpose of godliness? seeing that we will receive each, uh, an eternal crown of glory. See, it's like what Paul said earlier in that verse. They're doing those things for, for, for something that's perishable. Right. But what we're doing, we're doing something that will last for eternity. Right. This self-discipline is for us here now, and it prepares us for, for, for our time in glory. Amen? Amen. And so we have to be conscious about that. We have to be discipline with with our walk in Christ we can't be loose in our walk we can't be loose in how we carry ourselves you know um, so this time that we haven't been going to church actually convening in the body so we are to stay conditioned in our word stay stay conditioned in our word right stay so it's not so it's not a situation where okay well we can't go to church right now so I guess I'm a chill no because this is not about a church relationship right this is about a God relationship right and if this is about a God relationship even though we can't go to church I can still open my Bible and spend some time with the Lord absolutely and it should be it should be because it becomes a conditioning for our lifestyle. When we say we give our life to the Lord, we want God to be Lord over our everything. And this is so important where Jesus says, learn of me, because he knew that we wouldn't know it all in a vacuum. 
So in our conditioning and our working out, as he was given the description of athletes and such, we as believers, our conditioning and our working out is really reading our word and, and sometimes dissecting the same word over and over and over until it really becomes a part of our being and our understanding. Because we want to grow to know what God is saying for us to do. God lays it out in his word. And I know many of us, we have already gotten other associative learning equipment to help us grow because it's a part of our investment. That's our weight lifting in the spirit. And not only that, it's then applying it. Right. Applying it. Lord, you told me you would give me peace that surpasseth all understanding. That's what your scripture said. In the midst of everything that's going on, God, I'm looking for your peace. Your peace in what? Your peace in who you are. Um, a lot of what we talked about Sunday in um, the message was about worship. Our cord, if you all remember the cord, as we were talking about that example, from the TV to the socket, God being the socket, we being the TV, but our cord is the worship, it's the connection. And funny enough, my cord on my phone charger went out this week. That's another story I'll tell y'all about it. But it did go out and I couldn't make the connection. The phone was there, the battery was dying, and the car was there and able to charge, but I didn't have a cord. My cord had been damaged. Our worship is our cord to getting to God. And that is where the Father desires those that worship him in spirit and in truth. In that being said, because we're not able to meet in the four walls as we had been, Pastor said it, it's not a church four walls relationship, it's a God relationship. It's our relationship with the Lord. So being able to commune with the Lord daily and being able to be now even that much more intentional to be disciplined in our walk is so important and I know that it it pleases God when he sees that even outside of the four walls we're yet walking in obedience we're not letting our spirits get drained down because our body is the temple of God Amen. Um, it, it makes a difference so this letter B if you all have the paper um, it's 20, page 21 letter B it says in all things so that, and that's what we're talking about in all things are we to build up ourselves in the word and I would dare say have we set ourselves a, a diet for our building up of faith daily I'm going to read this much you know or I'm going to have that much and I'm going to spend this much time just quiet and disciplined from everything else but, but you know what, that, that's the part of this one, this one because we could talk about, like you just said, I, I'm, I've decided to set aside this time to read my word mm -hmm. and to pray and, and to have a little devotional time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's great. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. But the dis, where does the discipline part comes in? It comes in and being consistent with it, yes. even when other things try to interrupt that time. So yes. if I say, okay, six o'clock in the evening, I'm going to set a time from six to six thirty. I'm, that's going to be the Lord's time. It never fails no. that at five forty-five, everything start happening. Everything started. Phone, phone, my phone had rang all day. All day. Now all of a sudden, everybody trying to call. Yep. Yep. I want to have a conversation. Exactly. Or the kids hungry and you got this and you got that and what you normally have set up for them ain't working. Now they got something else to do and need your attention. And again, as the world is about to, you know, open back up as they're saying, um, God knows that the time that we've been in this way, none of us have been in this place ever in our life. So all of this was new for everybody. But those of us that are believers, I just believe that we took our prayer and our Bible time and our reading time and our consecrated time, I believe we took it a step further and we gave God a dedication that he could count on. Go ahead. Now that the world is about to open up or they're about to start lifting the, um, stay home orders. the stay home orders, can God yet count on that commitment of time? That commitment of time. In spite of in spite the of. distractions. Exactly. In spite of things being life. open. It, it, exactly. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I was talking to someone the other day and they were saying, well, you know, the benefit of, of this have stay home orders is I found more time that I 
that I've had to read my Bible and get more, more into my walk. And I realize how I was slacking up in this, that, and the other. And so I'm good. I said, okay, that's great right now. Mm -hmm. But what happens when everything can get back to, to normal? So, exactly. Are you going to stay there? Because see, it's real easy to get into a good groove when you ain't got no, no, nothing else to do because you're stuck at home. Exactly. But once you have options again, yes, can yes, you yes. still be disciplined and saying, I know I got all these options, but I said from this time to this time is, is the time that I'm going to give to the Lord. Exactly. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. Exactly. And the phone ring, yo, I, let me call you back because I've got, you know, I, this is my Lord, my time with the Lord. I'll hit you back. They or, can't. better yet, let me call people, let them know, do not hey, disturb. Don't, right. between On this mute. time this exactly. time, this is my time that I spend with the Lord. Exactly. But whatever it is, and see, it won't be. See, so then we handle the 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 phone thing, but then there'll be something else. Discipline is, regardless of what's going on, Yes. if this is the time I've set aside for the Lord, this is the time the Lord's going to get. Exactly. And and that's, that's very true because as the world is opening up and things are, you know, happening, can God count on our committed time that we have given? And I'll take it beyond this situation with COVID-19 and all of this. As God bless us with the very things we pray for, can God yet count on our committed time? Wouldn't he bless us with it? Lord, bless me with this job. I need this job, God. You know what I need, and you know the finances I need. And God bless you with the job, but then God can't find you after the job. Or Lord, bless me to get married. I'm looking to get married. And God brings someone into your life, but it cannot be a matter that it Replaces God God's, no longer hears from you. No God more. no longer hears from you. You cannot unless unless the relationship in trouble. Exactly. They ain't God hear from you. Exactly, man. exactly. Or you know, Lord, I, I'm praying for a child, and then when the child comes, everything is out of perspective, and God no longer gets the time. In all our life, God give everybody the same 24 hours a day, and the one thing that God has spoken in my spirit is that. I have to be intentional about my time set aside for him. Um, it's not God's desire to get in our way of whatever we're doing, but we need God in our way in all that we're doing. So when we make him first, when we take that dedicated time in all things, as title B says, to make God first and to give God due diligence to receive from him and to hear from him, then God can make every pathway to everything else straight. And not just that, but being disciplined in the application of the word of God in your life. Yes, yes, yes. What do I mean? So if I'm if if my attitude is Lord, I'm going to be more consistent and 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 disciplined in walking your word out. Yes. Now I'm on on on, on I'm driving uh or, or I've made it to work. I'm at my cubicle and somebody says something flip it towards me. Do I, you know, say something, flip back to him? Well, if that's the case, then I'm not being disciplined in my word because my word says don't repay evil for evil. Right. So somebody's going to be flipping with you, God bless you. Right. You know, it's be, that, th there are so many aspects of being disciplined. Right. Discipline in your walk, discipline in the application of God's word in your life. What did we say early? Even when it's something I don't want to do. Right. Right. You know, That's my spouse especially. is clowning. And Lord knows I want to clown back with them. But you know what? I know yeah, what the word so. says. Yes. I'm going to check myself. God, yes. I need you to handle this situation because yes. I'm trying to check my. Whatever it is, I'm being disciplined. Absolutely. And applying your word to my life. I'm being disciplined in how I walk this out. Again, like we said earlier, am I perfect? No, I'm not perfect. Right. But. I'm going to strive for perfection. Right. When I mess up, when I fail, okay, Lord, how did what call, how did I fail that? One? How did I mess up? And Lord, keep me mindful next time because I know I'll be in this situation again down the road. Keep me mindful of how I messed up right. before, so I don't mess up again. Why? Because I'm trying to get to a place that I'm di disciplined in my walk. Right. Because the world would give you several opportunities and several reasons to be undisciplined life itself your your flesh would give you several reasons and opportunity to be undisciplined but we right. got to be disciplined but it's interesting that i said it because that takes us into that next part uh, number one make your bodies your slaves 
1 Corinthians chapter 9, 26 and 27 says, Therefore I run in such a way as not without aim. I box in such a way as not beating the air, but I buffet my body and I make it my slave. Least possibly after I preach to others, I myself should be disqualified. The key to self-control is to make your body obedient to you, to bring your body into subjection or into obedience. Yes. Obedience to what? Obedience to God's word. Right. Obedience to God's way. You know, this reads here, our body should be in complete subjection to us. And I just put in a side note, I need it to be in complete subjection more than just to me, but to me as I'm being obedient to the Holy Spirit in my life. I need my body to be subject to me as I'm being obedient to yes. the word of God in my life. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. This means saying no. Mm -hmm. This means saying no to the desires of the flesh which rise up within us and not allowing these desires to rule or direct us. What have we said? The word, the word clearly talks about how the spirit and the flesh are, are, are at war with one another. Right. And I right. can't be in line with my flesh and please God at the same time. No. That, that's like trying to be cool with, with two, the two countries that are warm we with right. one another. Right. I got to pick a side. Right. Either I'm going to be on this side or I'm going to be on that side. Right. If you're on the, the side of the spirit, then you got to uh, be completely against giving in to the desires of the flesh. And trust right. you me, the flesh has some desires. Absolutely. The flesh has some dies, some desires that we enjoy doing. Yolanda and I have talked about this in the past. When we were in uh, unsaved and in sin, it was like it wasn't as if we was miserable committing sin. No. We enjoyed the sin that we were doing. Right. But we came to that place of understanding that the sin that we enjoyed because our flesh enjoyed it. Right. Brought us, made us enemies to God. Right. Right. You know, we'll explain that a little later down the line. Uh, but in essence, it, I would put it like this. It put us at odds with God. Why? Because the uh, the spirit and the flesh war against one another. Well, that's been the, the, that's been the downfall of man since Adam and Eve. When they satisfied the flesh, they displeased the father. And it is not God's will that we give our flesh all the authority over us. Um, you know, we often call it a case that it can't help it. Well, we can help it. <laughs> you know, we got to help it because it'll get us in a world of trouble. And here's the thing with this. God's word, when we live a disciplined life unto God's word, we are the benefactors, if that makes sense. We are the ones that benefit. When we live a life disciplined to God's word, according to what God says, we as ourselves, our flesh actually benefits. I talked about smoking, how I smoked for so long years ago, and how when I asked the Lord to take smoking out of me and I quit through the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm the one that living the benefit out of it. When I asked the Lord to take anger and evil and un unforgiveness out of me, um, holding a grudge at somebody, you can be, you can make yourself sick with holding grudges and anger, and I'm just not going to let it go. So many, and I'm not saying that whether the marriage should have stayed or shouldn't have stayed, but so many relationships, marriages, parent relationship, family relationship, friend relationships has been ruined and torn apart because people had unforgiveness or unrepentance. And when the word says, love those that despitefully use you, when the word says, forgive those as God has forgiven us, all of those things are to our benefit. We want the, you know, back in John, um, out of the book of John in Re near Revelations, he said, I would that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. It's God's will that we prosper. God is sitting on the throne. And when he give us instruction, it's not for our destruction. It's for our success. But we have to see it as obedience. Absolutely. Because especially when you don't give your life to Christ or you haven't gotten committed to your walk until you've grown. You didn't, you know, been allowed to accomplish some things and you've been allowed to get, you know, some levels in life. It's a little hard to stop doing things unless you come to a, a sickness or a 
detriment or some kind of you know situation when God says long before it gets to that I want you to forgive mm -hmm. long before it gets to that I want you to repent and release yourself from that baggage long before it gets to that I want you to not um, get comfortable with lying cheating and getting over and hustling because that's just a life of running from one problem to the next problem I want you to be settled in your spirit I want you to have a foundation because in me, there is peace. In me, there is everlasting joy. So when God gives us the, the word, it's not a part of disciplines to do's and don'ts. It's a part of a loving relationship from my father that says, this is what is going to benefit you, Yolanda. This is what's going to benefit you, my child of God. As children are at home now, all the parents who got kids at home now, you doing homework with them. You not making them sit down and do homework. I mean, some of it is helping them to get out of your hair. But when they do their homework, that's to benefit them so that they can know what it takes to go to the next level, to the next grade. So when you're doing that, you're a parent that's implementing disciplines and giving them structure so that they can benefit. So when God gives it to us, it's for us to benefit. And that's just how much he loves us. You don't tell your ch your children not to touch a hot stove because you're trying to keep them from something good. You're trying to keep them from harming themselves. I just love Just like the things that your parents instilled Absolutely. in you or the things that my parents instilled in me, the things that I instilled in her, was for our benefit going Absolutely. forward that would help us, that would set us up for success later in life. Later but in here's life. the thing. We had to take those things that they instilled in us and apply it. Exactly. It meant nothing if we didn't apply those things. Exactly. You know, exactly. the work ethic ethic that they put in you and that they put in me was there, but we had to apply what they taught us. Absolutely. If we didn't apply it and we sit here trying to figure out why I'm struggling in life, how come I can't get forward, well, that's your own fault. Yeah. Because it wasn't like they didn't try and give you the tools needed to be successful Absolutely. in life. So that goes back to what you were saying a moment ago. The things that God uh, warned us against mm -hmm. is not because he's trying to keep us from a good thing. No, no. He it's trying, but, but he knows the destruction that that thing will lead yes, to. Yes, the baggage of right. holding on to that. And it's his will that we live a long, prosperous, healthy and wealthy life filled with success and freedom. And I'm telling you, even if it feels hard to do, do God's word because just because it's hard don't make it not right. It's hard because it's not what we're used to. It's hard because my flesh don't always like exactly. it. Exactly. And that's the only reason. But I'll tell you one but thing. But once you bring your flesh under subjection. Once you bring it under subjection. It's not that hard. When you can humble yourself. It may be hard a couple of times because you're murmuring under your breath saying, ooh, we. But when you're doing it unto God, God will let the Holy Spirit be your helper. And he will give you more peace in these situations. And, and everything gets better because you're doing it unto God. You're doing it unto God. I, I absolutely agree with all of that. It is imperative to our spiritual growth that we make our bodies our slaves or we make our bodies obedient to us yes. and always keep it, keep our bodies under subjection. Yep. If we master our bodies by the power of the Holy Spirit, then our race will not be aimless. Absolutely. The life that we're trying to live unto God will not be aimless. But exactly. we'll, it's like what you said earlier, you begin to see the fruit yes. of, yes. of, 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 bringing your body into subject, subjection, you'll start to see the benefit of, of being, being forgiving and not grudge holding and not anger Annie and, you know, anger Igor. You will see the benefits of, of releasing yourself from that bondage of got to fight your own battles. The Lord will fight our battles. And like I said, when you're doing it unto God, it gives it a point and a purpose. Um, you know, the enemy or the inner me says, you know, I ain't got to take this. I ain't got to put up with this. But when you're doing it unto God, you say, Lord, I'm trying my best to obey your word. Lord, I'm trusting in your word. Your word said for me to do it. It ain't because I want to do it. It's because your word said do it. So God, if you are giving me this instruction, then you're going to give me the provision to get through it and to do it. God does it every time. He does it every time. Greater is he that is in us 
than what is in the earth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so when we bring our bodies into subjection and have it have our bodies, our flesh is obedient to us as we're following the leading of God's word and the leading of the Holy Spirit within us, we will be effective for God. Yes, we now are. we are a vessel that God can use for his glory. That's it. Amen. That's it. When I brought my, my flesh under subjection, so I'm not cussing somebody out because they talk crazy to me. I'm not being rude and evil to somebody because they was rude and evil to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not this, but when they do that stuff to me, towards me, but yet I'm able to show love back. Now yeah. God can use me because you never know. If life has a funny way of bringing those same people back around your way, Absolutely. needing you to pray for them, and Absolutely. needing you to do, why do they come back? Because they know how they treated you. Absolutely. And in spite of how they treated you, you treated them with love and kindness and respect. That stuff gets remembered. Yes, it does. And they know how to come back your way. Yes, it does. I'm sorry. I'm but can you pray for me? I'm going through a situation. Yes. Can you pray for me? See, now God can use you yep. to be a witness yep. because when you could have uh, uh, reacted before as the flesh would have wanted to, right. you reacted according to the way the word told you to react. Right. And now that you're in this situation, God can now use you. Exactly. exactly. Versus if you go the way of the flesh, guys, I can't even use you now. Right. I'm at to send that person somewhere else because you don't show Joe behind to them when you show should have showed them my love for them through you. As well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean if you if one thing about it And those are just examples. Right, right. I mean right. there's so many other things. I'm sorry, go ahead. Right. No, one thing about it, everything that we do unto the Lord, we gonna live to see the benefits. And what benefits we may or may not see we're going to know it because we know God. Um, my mother used to always say, y'all kids going to live to see people reap what they sow. She said, me and your daddy already know. Saying that to say, you don't wait watching and see if they're going to reap what they sow. But when you go on with your life to obey God, and you go on with your life, though it may hurt your feelings and hurt your flesh, and you cry out to God and say, Lord, you see what I'm going through, you see what I'm putting up with, you see how I could hustle and flow, but Lord, I'm humbling myself so that I can be in alignment with your word. God will make provisions every time. And those be the moments where God say, when you cry now, you know I'm trying to do right, you know, and then that's when God says, well done. Well done. My, my good, good and faithful that's son. it that's it that's it that's sometimes it. that's what's got it that has to be what picks you up yep. though they mistreated you though they did this then the other yep. you know you did right by god yes and, and and by what the word tells you to do yes and it still hurts you because look i'm not gonna say doing things the right way won't hurt right right because at the end of the day we're not robots without emotions Right. or without feelings we have feelings right and if people to treat us bad and talk crazy towards us and yet we still it you can go home some nights feeling like god why <laughs> but sometimes you gotta let that but well done yes my good and faithful servant you gotta let that be what picks up your spirit you gotta let that be what dries the tears out of your eyes and say you know you show sure right as long as you were pleased, yes. as long as you were pleased, yes. then I'm good with that. Yes. But like she said, but one thing about it, life still has a way of bringing stuff full circle and people have to come back your way. But again, it says when we do that, we we become effective, effective for God. For his glory. But That's right. if we are body ruled or body control or, bo or flesh control, then we will not be useful or fruitful for God. And at the end of the day, that's what part, at the end of the day, thank you, Holy Spirit. Being a Christian should be way more than just, God, gimme, 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 gimme. Absolutely. Absolutely. But absolutely, walking this life out should also be about, Lord, use me, use me, use me, use That's me. That's it. That's it. See, we get caught up in the gimme, 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 gimme. Yes. And yes. not even think about, Lord, use me, use me, use me. Yes. But as you grow in this walk, you realize that this is more than what God can do for you. Yes. But it's now what can I do or or, or rather, Lord, what how can I, can I be of use to you? Yeah. And 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 your purpose being fulfilled on this earth. Absolutely. Or your plan being fulfilled in my family or or my co-workers mm -hmm. or 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 my friends or whatnot. Mm -hmm. It says a body rude Christian cannot be counted on to move at the impulse of God's spirit because he is too attentive 
to the impulse of his flesh. Mm. Let me say that again. A body ruled or flesh ruled Christian cannot, and that is a possible person, a flesh ruled Christian. Absolutely. That means that's a Christian who has not brought their bodies under subjection. Absolutely. But a, a, a flesh ruled Christian cannot be counted on to move at the impulse of God's spirit or to move at the instruction of God because he is too attentive to the impulse of the flesh. God, to, God said, bless that person with $25. The flesh said, wait a minute, hold on. I got bills to pay. I got this to do. I got that to do. Blah, blah, blah. See, God that. can't use you. I God said, line. I got you. Yeah. I just yeah. need you to be obedient. You might yeah. be blessing him with $25. I got $500 waiting on you. That's the truth. But you don't know that if you're, right. not, if you're not walking in complete trust. Mm -hmm. And here's what's interesting. And that, this took me back to something that we went through in Bible study when we were actually in class. Every one of us, pastor and myself, every one of us have been a Christian who was still flesh led. Yeah. <laughs> Every one of us, because we, every day we walk in the flesh. So as we're teaching this and sharing this, we're not teaching it from a place that we're sitting on top of the mountain and we've been conquered all. We're sharing with each other exactly what we're having to implement every day. I got to choose to not be grudge holding, angry, um, unforgiving vengeful. And, and, and vengeful and, and petty on some levels and you know gotta get you back I can't rest till I get you back yeah, you know I some, some of us that was our thing I gotta get you back and like you said it becomes the word it becomes the word that we abide by and every one of us every one of us me pastor every one of us have had to cry sometimes and say Lord give me the strength to get over this so if you new to this walk, don't get defeated already because we've been in this for a while and season and we yet Wait a minute, have even, to, if, even if you're not new to this, absolutely. but you've been walking this for a while, but now you come into that place where, you know, I got to do better. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to come up higher. That's the whole thing. We're sharing what we all having to do. We're taking this in. We read this thoroughly and, and digest it in before we serve it out because this is a journey we all are on. It's just like this COVID drama. We all are in this truly together and we are to encourage one another to get to spiritual maturity. We're encouraging one another to say, yeah, it's gonna be times that you wanna fight back, talk back, it's going to be times that you can actually get over and get by. But Lord, I know you see me. Lord, I know you see my heart. And just as much as God sees our tears, God sees our fears. God sees our worries. But also God sees that heart that says, I can get away with it. And that becomes that thing that I say that, God, you are my judge. You are my secret judge and you're my open judge. You're the one that I have to bow before if I should be caught up to you right now. So I want to make sure that my efforts are pleasing to you. No, Lord, this don't feel good and I don't feel like doing it, but God, I'm going to do it because your word said it. And it's just what we do. What we're doing with Bible study is conditioning each other with the word, conditioning each other and encouraging each other to say, yep, yep, greater is he that is in me, that is in you, than what is in this earth, than the struggles we face then the fights we come up against because whatever it is god has already empowered us the strength to overcome it but we got to draw on him and we got to do it because of him i can't do it just because of me you know all of us know that this fight has to be the purpose have to be more about god than just about me because i'll lose every time it's been times i've said it ain't worth it and because my desire to please the Lord was more worth it than what Yolanda wanted, it became the goal. Lord, I'm here to please you. I'm serving you. I'm doing this unto you. And that's the thing. When that is your, when when that becomes your attitude, and trust and believe, that becomes your attitude more and more as you grow in the Lord. But that place where you get to that place where, Lord, I want to be used by you. Lord, I want my life to to uh, to reflect bring, you, to reflect you, and to Absolutely. bring glory unto you. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and as you get to that place, it stopped being so much about what can God do for me. I said that a moment right. ago. It stopped, it, it, and it becomes you become more focused on 
being used by God. And that's part of what, what Jesus talked about. Seek ye first the, the kingdom, kingdom of God. How can I be Jesus used for the kingdom? How can I be of use to the yes. kingdom? How can the, I, I be of help to the kingdom? How can I be, uh, how can I give, give unto God my service? And I don't know if we've all made that adjustment or make that adjustment regularly, but Lord, I thank you for all that you've done for me. God, what can I do to please you? Um, I know Pastor, you know, got this wonderful saying about our religious resumes. We can often lift up our life, Lord, I do this and I do that. But when we take a step back and make the adjustment, Honestly saying, Lord, I thank you for all that you've done. I thank you for your favor, Sean. I thank you for your blessings given. And God, I know the test that I'm going through, but Lord, how can I please you? I, I, we have to be intentional about making that a part of our prayers because everybody's not going to be the preacher and everybody's not going to be the teacher from the podium or the pulpit. But in my everyday life, we, we do more preaching and teaching at home with our families, our kids, and work with our co-workers and whatever else than we do on a Sunday when we go into church and we didn't turn our collar backwards or upside down or whichever way it goes. Your life is to be lived to say, Lord, how can my life please you? But again, you don't get to that place until you've gotten disciplined yes. in your walk with God. Intentionally. As long as you're still in that undisciplined place, absolutely. more times than not, that undisciplined place is also that place that still want, wants what he can get out of God, wants yeah. what she can get out of God. Yeah. But when you get to that disciplined place in your walk with God, yeah. now it is more about how can God use me. Yes. And see, I understand that if I make the kingdom my priority, God will handle all the other things. Won't God will handle it? my my wants. God Won't will handle my it? needs. Yes. See, we get mad at some of these preachers because they drive this or, or they live in this kind of car, but we lose fact of the we we lose sight of the fact that they've made serving God their priority. That's it. So you're just seeing the blessings of them making God their priority. But guess what? He can do that for all of us. That's it. That's it. That's it. He can do that for all of us. Yes, Because guess what? Preachers ain't the only ones driving nice cars. God Preachers ain't the only ones living in nice houses. Mm -hmm. But as we discipline ourselves, because yes. here's, here's the thing. We don't do, we don't, we said this last week, we're not trying to do all this to get something out of God. Right. We do this to please God. Right. And that our and that our lives will be bring glory unto right. God. Right. That right. being said, just like as we as natural parents, if our kids is doing everything we expect them to do, we ain't gotta keep telling them two, two, three, four times, go wash the dishes, go take the trash out, go do your homework. We ain't gotta tell them four or five times. I, I expect good grades, but they do it, they bring home good grades anyway. You come home, the dishes being washed, the trash taken out, you ain't had to say, Oh, you gonna do for your kids. So you mean to tell me the Lord have to tell us to forgive four or five times? <laughs> You mean to tell me that the Lord have to tell the saints to forgive four or five times? You mean to tell me that the Lord have to tell us to read our word four or five times? That, thank you, God, for being a, a patient God. How many know God is patient? Very patient. But one thing about it, when we get to that yes. place where he ain't got to tell you, you, are, you need to go go apologize. But you know, you know what? Let me... You already hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. We talked about last week about how the enemy on one shoulder, yes, the spirit on yes, the other shoulder. Yes. You know, when, you know, I need to go apologize to that. And that enemy, you ain't got to apologize. You the one, you didn't start it. They started, they said it. Ah, mm -mm. I'm going to listen to you. I'm gonna go. Let me, I, I want to apologize. I want to make this right. Please and Holy Spirit said, I ain't even had to get on your head to do that. But you know what? Because the spirit now, we're now led more by the spirit. And what you feed is what will lead. If your flesh is leading, mm, is being fed. Is what, if your again. flesh is being fed, what you feed is what will lead. If and that, that needs to be on t-shirt, huh? Ah, uh, there it is. <laughs> yes. If you feed the flesh all that the flesh wants and you don't bring the flesh into the obedience of God's word, then the flesh is going to lead. But when the spirit is leading, the spirit, spirit can, fed. the spirit is fed. 
The spirit is fed by your word. The spirit is fed by your worship. The spirit is fed by your prayer life with God. Your then spirit is fed by your obedience. Your spirit is fed by your obedience. Absolutely. Then the spirit doesn't have to drag your flesh and say, go repent. You automatically know you know what? I didn't say that right. I can probably do that a little bit better. And they still might be barking and talking, whatever, whatever. But you know, and you're not doing it because of them. You're doing it because the spirit of God in you is saying, you know what? I could have handled that a little bit better. And sometimes they may not never forgive you or they may not never repent. But that's okay because when we do it unto God, when the spirit is leading the spirit is fed, that's what is leading, and that's what will win every time. But when the flesh is leading, the flesh is fed. The flesh is fed by my anger. The flesh is fed by I didn't had enough. The flesh is fed by all that I'm, me, 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 what I'm dealing with. Then the flesh becomes what leads. And what cannot please God is our flesh leading the way when God is the spirit and the spirit of our life. So that becomes that difference. And when the spirit is leading us and we fed our spirit and the spirit is in control, now the spirit can get in front of us and say, I forgive, I release, I'm, I'm able to do what is right. I'm able to walk this out because again, greater is he. And we don't say these things because they're good catchphrases. We say these things because they are the truth by which we live. Greater is he that is in me than what is in this earth. We so. got about 10 minutes or well, 13 minutes before we're done. So I want to go ahead and finish up this section. So go ahead. Um, so number two, if we can turn to 22, that was good. That was some good stuff because it's always good to be reminded of our strength. Number two on page 22, a fruit of your spirit. Self-control is listed as one of the fruits of our reborn spirit, Galatians 5 and 22 and 23, because every Christian has within him the ability to control the desires of the flesh and to bring those desires into subjection. Stop, wait, wait, read that again. Every Christian. Every Christian. Some Christian. Every Christian. A couple of Christians. Every Christian. The seasoned Christian. Every Christian. The church leaders. Every Christian, every Christian has within him the ability to control the desires of the flesh and to bring those desires into subjection. So wait, wait, wait. I can't say God know my heart. No, that ain't going to work because he know your heart. And he know what he put in you. He know what he put in your heart. And he knows what you are capable of doing. Yes, he does. Oh, okay. He see your heart wide open. So that's no longer a, a good excuse. God know my heart. He's saying, yes, I do. And I know within your heart lies me. And when you pull on me and you feed me, I'm the one that can give you the strength to do better than what you're doing. So it says every Christian has within him the ability to control the desires of the flesh and to bring those desires into subjection. This took me to the book of John 14 and 26, where Jesus said, I will send back the helper. The help of John 14, 26 mm -hmm. through 21. This is why the Christians have it within us. But the comforter shall come. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I've said unto you. Jesus sent back the Holy Ghost to give us the help that we need. If we're trying to do this of ourselves, you'll lose every time. You, again, that's that willpower. I can do it. I can do it. But when we're doing unto God, godliness, a life that honors God, that's where the Holy Spirit is now our helper for. We are not going to need the Holy Spirit when we've gone on the glory. We need the Holy Spirit in the earth to give us the strength to operate in self-control. Self-control, every Christian has it within him, the ability to control the desires of the flesh and to bring those desires into subjection. What is subjection? Obedience of the word of God. I'm going to go down to the last um, lines Start of this. Many, many, oh, many become discouraged when faced with the prospects of self-discipline because they think themselves incapable of it. Many 
become discouraged when you think of self-discipline because you think you can't do it. But the last part that I was going to, every born again believer has it within them, him, the power of the almighty God to discipline himself for the purpose of godliness. This is the highest purpose for which a person can apply self-discipline. You, you know, it's so many things that we wouldn't want to do. But even Paul said in, in, in scripture, the things that I would, I do not. And the things that I would not, things that I shouldn't do, I do. We can say, I want to do this. I want to be a better person. I want to do these things. But without the help of God, we can only go so far. We can only go so far. And I can do good up to a point. That's why morally good is not good enough. It has to be goodness unto God. Godliness, a life that honors God. A life that honors God is a life that lives by the obedience of the word. This kind of self-control manifests itself in a person reading the Bible when he doesn't feel like it. It's evident when we go to church or prayer meetings or get on Zoom and Periscope when we could be doing something else and we're not emotionally up to it. It shows itself when a Christian abstains from activities which either are not beneficial for him and are stumbling blocks and or they are stumbling blocks to other believers. Just because we can don't mean we should. Self-control is the thing to say, I know I could do it, but would this please the Father? I know I could get away with it, but does this please the Father? So abstaining from things that God says, and abstinence means refraining from them, not doing the things that would displease the Lord, that's self-control. That's me saying my walk with the Lord is too important to me to give in to this or to give in to that. And everything, God has to be the goal. God has to be the finish line. Um, pleasing God has to be the light at the end of the tunnel, if you will, because as long as God is in our view, no matter how rough it may get, no matter what the struggle may be, there are times that God is going to say, be still and know that this is my fight. The battle is not yours. It belongs to me. I gave you the instruction on how to walk this out in me not in of yourself. It's going to be times that in all the chaos, we need that quiet, still voice that says, I am God. I got you. When the tears are flowing or when the frustrations have become overwhelming, that's that scripture we were talking about. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. God has to be the goal. When God is the goal, then self-control becomes something that we are able to do through the power of the Holy Spirit. In every case in which this self-discipline is applied, one will find the subordination of the mind and or body to the standard of the word and the, to the impulse of the Holy Spirit. Say that again. In, one will find. One will find the subordination of the mind and or the body to the standard of the word and to the impulse of the Holy Spirit. Basically, we will become subordinate to the Word of God and to the Holy Ghost. We will become obedient to the Word of God and the Holy Ghost when we implement self-control for the purpose of, of walking this out with God. Exercise faith in the fact that you have all the ability for self-discipline within you. Remember, discipline for the purpose of godliness will only be possible when we put our trust in God's power within. To be honest, that's it, that's all. When we put our trust in the power that God has given us within, when we put our focus on God, we can do all things through him who strengthens me. Um, sometimes we come in out of situations, especially, you know, um, whether it be a threat to your, your income, a threat to your life, a threat to your livelihood, a threat to whatever we're dealing with. Lord, you know what I'm facing and you know how I could do some things or, or try to make some things happen. But God, if this isn't going to please you, I'm not looking forward to temporary reward. I'm not looking forward to what I can get out of it right now. I'm looking forward the long run of endurance. The word tells us that the race is not given to the swift or to the strong, but to he that endures to the end. 
we apply this same word for ourselves and the Holy Spirit was sent here for all of us, for all of us. I, before we end this tonight, I, I don't want to gloss over what, what we've talked about. Um, both in the first paragraph of what you read and in the last paragraph, I uh, highlighted it. Um, every, in the, uh, in the first paragraph, um, in the second to last sentence, it says, every born again believer has within him the power of Almighty God to discipline himself for purposes of godliness. And then down here in the third paragraph, it says, uh, middle of the uh, paragraph, the power to live a disciplined life of consistency has been given to us in the new cre creation. Amen. So here's the thing. And that's why, that's why I didn't want to just go past that and get into a lot of other stuff. This, what we read, read here, along with what scripture says, is why I don't subscribe to this theory of once you give your life to Christ, you got to now tarry and wait for the Holy Spirit to come. That you just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. It would take a week, two weeks, a month, two months, three months. You just waiting, waiting, waiting on the, on the Holy Spirit. That doesn't make sense when he gives us the Holy Spirit so that we can walk this out. Right. All right. So if he's holding back, giving the Holy Spirit to us, how can we walk this out if we have to depend on the Holy Spirit to walk this out? Absolutely. Now, I know we, we take that tarrying because the, the disciples tarry for the uh, Holy Spirit in the upper room. And I get that. The problem is they had to tarry or wait, as which is what tarry is. They had to wait in the upper room because the Holy Spirit had not yet been poured out into the earth. Right. But once the Holy Spirit was poured out into the earth, you no longer had to wait to be indwelled with the Holy Spirit. Once you gave your life to Christ, right? Absolutely. Amen. the Holy Spirit came and dwelt on the inside of you. Why? To lead and guide and direct you. Why? To empower you to walk this out. Absolutely. I can't walk this out under my own power. No. We've already proven that. That's why Jesus had to come and die for us because we couldn't do right in and of ourselves. Amen. Amen. And even after he died for us, we still wouldn't be able to do it in and of ourselves. No. But we're able to do it. Why? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's not a matter of I got to wait for the Holy Spirit to come. No, no. the minute you say yes to Jesus, the minute you believed in your heart That's and right. confess with your mouth right. that the Lord Jesus is, 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 is God, the Holy Spirit came and dwelled on the inside of you. So Man. at that point, what does it say? The power to live a disciplined life of consistency has been given to us in the new creation. Amen. We are the new creation. When that's you give your life to Christ, you become a new creation. That's what born you, again means. That's what born again means. Absolutely. You just got to now depend on the Holy Spirit. What do you mean? The Holy Spirit, I, I've said this in church and Bible study before, even when I was flesh-led, Mm -hmm. Even when I was saved, but still led by my flesh, mm -hmm. I cannot say that anything I was about to do in my flesh, that the Holy Spirit didn't try and talk me out of, that Absolutely. the Holy Spirit didn't try and uh, 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 counsel me and lead me right. right. I just ignored the Holy Spirit. But I had the Holy Spirit the minute I gave my life to Christ. That's I right. was just ignoring the power within That's right. and following the flesh. That's but right. when I brought my flesh under subjection, right. I was better able to listen and obey and the hear Holy the Spirit. voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Absolutely. But like I said two Sundays ago, it wasn't like the Holy Spirit just started talking. No. He had been talking all along. Absolutely. But I was flesh-led. And because I was flesh-led, I was hearing and, and, and obeying what the flesh was saying to do. Absolutely. But the minute I started being spirit-led and hearing and obe obeying what the Spirit was saying, that's when the Holy Spirit took full control Absolutely. because I be, then became obedient to it. I know you're trying well, to say no, that. Well, no, that, that was it because what you feed will leave. What you feed will leave. You bring your flesh to God and you say, Lord, I give you my life or you go to the altar or you pray the prayer with us and you that, that's your flesh saying that, Lord, I'm giving you my life. That's a part of committing our ways to God. And as Pastor said, 
Once you've given your life to Christ, you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. You believe that Jesus Christ rose again on the third day with all power in his hands for our life. Salvation is ours and salvation don't come empty. Salvation yeah. comes full. And just like a baby coming to this world with all that it needs, you don't give a child the left arm later on after they two and give them the right arm after they three. A child comes here fully, fully with everything it needs. It just has to grow. Am I correct? So when you give your life to Christ and you receive salvation, you get everything we need. We just have to grow. And again, it's what's fed is what is going to grow. If I'm feeding the Holy Spirit, if I'm feeding my spirit, if I'm feeding with God's word, God's word is going to grow in me and that becomes what is dominant. I, 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 as you were talking, I heard the Holy Spirit say, people say, I'm waiting on the Holy Spirit. The Holy He's saying, spirit. I'm here, I'm waiting for you to start listening to me. Absolutely. I've been here the whole time. I'm waiting for you to listen and obey. Yeah. You ain't waiting on me. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. So I'm those of you. you who are watching on, on Periscope, on Periscope or, Zoom. or Zoom and you knew you just recently gave your walk to your life to Christ or whatever, don't let nobody tell you you don't have the Holy Ghost. You got to tear away from the You have the Holy Spirit. Yes, you, you got to just start tuning your ear to him speaking to you. Because he's talking to you. Absolutely. He's, he, and he's instantly trying to lead and guide and direct you. Absolutely. You just got to start learning to hear and obey. The Holy Spirit. I mean, that's a part of your faith. The minute you have faith to believe God, you have the faith to know that you have the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we have to get away from, um, you know, it's sad to say that we have to get away from sometimes the things that we've been taught whether it was erroneous or whether it was just without full understanding. I understand the tarrying process. I understand the, the process of denying my flesh, but I'm denying my flesh to obey the word of God. I'm walking by, I'm, all of our walk is by faith. God says without faith, it's impossible to please him. So the minute I have faith to believe that God is, I have faith to know that I have all that God has given me and God is not a, a two-step, part-step, three-step. Once you get to this part, I'm gonna give you the rest. God would give us all that we need. God has given us all that we need, but we have to feed our well, spirit. Wait, you just said getting to a place of denying the flesh. Mm -hmm. You don't deny the flesh the willpower. No. No. Let me say that again. You don't deny the flesh by willpower. No. You deny the flesh by being obedient to the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. Exactly. Exactly. You if it was all about willpower, yep. I would never be successful in some no. of the things in life. No. No. God is the goal. If you're relying on willpower, you'll never overcome mm -hmm. bondages that's in your life. No. You overcome bondages by being obedient to the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. You're able to deny your flesh right. by being obedient to the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. So again, that's why we gotta erase this erroneous doubt that once you say you're waiting on the Holy Spirit, because if that's the case, you ain't got the power uh, 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 to, to deny the flesh because if you're waiting on the Holy Spirit, you're waiting on the power that enables you right. to deny the flesh. Right. But if you understand that you got the Holy Spirit, right. you just got to now lean on his power. Uh, you got to lean on his power and you got to lean on him speaking to you Amen. in order to deny your flesh. Yes, you because, do. So what, what I'm saying, I'm trying to deny my flesh from, from, uh, from lust. All right? mm -hmm. If I'm just relying on my willpower, eventually I'm going to pick up that phone and call somebody. Right. But if I'm denying my flesh by 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 uh, 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 denying lustful desire, that only happens as as the flesh is trying to speak to you. you listen to the Holy Spirit say, "Don't you pick up that phone? Right. Don't pick up that phone because the, the, if you pick up that phone, it's just going to be a chain re a snowball effect. Don't pick up the phone. And if I just listen to the Holy Spirit." And not pick up the phone. Absolutely, I've overcome lust. Absolutely, but if I'm just, I'm just not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Willpower, willpower, you'll burn out. Oh, you'll burn out with willpower. You need God's power, 
And that's what God give us is his power, which goes far beyond willpower. And that becomes the supreme strength that we have to say greater is he that is within me. Um, Ephesians 1 and 13 was always a scripture that has just blessed my life when I was newly saved and given my life to the Lord. Um, Paul says here, in whom ye have also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Wait, 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 what did it say? After you believe? After you believe. Oh, so it didn't say after you believe and then waited. No, it says after you believe. You can read it for yourself, Ephesians 1 and 13. If anybody can get it in another translation, hurry up and see if you can turn to it. I just want some validation and backing up, but the word bags up itself. Ephesians 1 and 13, this scripture really rescued me from a lot of thoughts that I needed to wait longer. And, and God doesn't do us like that. Ephesians 1 and 13, I'm reading from the King James. If anybody have it in another translation, I invite you to um, unmute yourself and read it. But he says, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. That is the truth all by itself. That's God's word. And either we believe all of God's word or we not really believe in none of God's word. And I love how Jesus says that we cannot get caught up in tradition. Amen. Amen, Evangelist. You got the scripture? I have it. I have it in the message. Yes. And it says, it's in Christ that you, once you heard the truth and believed it, found yourself home free, signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. If you got it in your translation, y'all get it, read it, and hold it here to your heart because it will free you from the bondage of, do I have what I need? That's it. I love how that message version reads. Um, I have my King, King James version here, but it reads the same freedom, knowing that we have the Holy Spirit. God, once don't, you once you believe, once you believe, you can't have faith for one part and you need some actualities for another part. God don't work like that. The scripture that God gave us Sunday says that God is spirit. And he that worships him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God's spirit, everything about our walk with God is by faith. God ain't going to let us get up here and, well, now that part was by faith, but this part is by what you do. Right. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> I like that. God says this whole journey is by faith. But if you can have faith to believe him for all things, he can do all things and empower us in all things. And now we can look at ourselves. We can look at the enemy around us or the enemy about us. We can break generational curses when we know that we have the power of him, our new creation. I'm no longer bound to, you know, um, generational curses of family um, um, abuse or addictions or whatever could be. I'm no longer bound to the way of, of how I was. I am free in my new creation because I have the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That is truly, truly it. If we have it in any other versions, I welcome you to read it. If you got any questions, we want to be here for you. God's word defends itself. And we just do our best to share it and deliver it the right way. It's his will that we have spiritual maturity. It's his will that we are strong and built up in the word, that we are useful to God in every way in every way any thoughts comments questions before we close out in prayer please any thoughts any questions any comments unmute yourselves i'm i'm gonna unmute myself but bible study just blessed me tonight i don't know about nobody else but i've been over here just hollering jesus because it has truly blessed me i felt in the I, I wasn't in the sanctuary, but I was in the sanctuary. <laughs> I was in his presence over in here. I was in his presence. 
Bless and, and it just blessed me. But what you said, first lady, what you feed is what you leave. Exactly. If you ain't filling yourself with the word of God, that's right. That's you right. Growing. That's you just right. not growing. Not at all. You just not. No, you're not even knowing. No, you're, you're just not. out here walking around. You're not even knowing who God is really, who He really not is. So, so it's just blessing me. Thank I mean, the more I can get in, the more I'm yeah. gonna get in. Yeah, there I'm it is. Get it, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna keep getting 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 it. And it's just, it just blessed me. My, my spirit is on a, on a 10 right now. Yeah, I am too, From, see, I am too. Yeah. God knows it's Woo. true. Yes. I tell y'all how y'all brought it, how y'all brought it, it just, it's just so real. Yes. It's real. Yes. And we have to know this. We have to know this because after this is over, yes. we have to know this to yes, go on. Yes, ma'am. So, so yes, my spirit is just pleased. And it's just, God, yes, yes, I'm yes, yes. Place right now, but when I get off of here, it's Thank going you. down. Just Thank know you, that. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just know that. It's it. going it. down. That's when it. I get off this line. Yes. My God. God be the glory. Feed your spirit, yes. and He will lead you into every success there is. Feed yes. your spirit. Feed your spirit. He will lead you into everything that God has for you. For the promises of God or yay and amen, we have to follow his will. And when we follow his will, we can't lose. We can't lose. Yes. I thank him. I thank him. Ooh, hallelujah. We thank God for you, evangelists, because it's the truth. And, and we validate the truth. We edify the truth. Um, we, we come on and I thank God that we are in individual places because you can't think, oh, they just got together and did that or said that. Mm. No, the word is what it is. And yes. the word is good. The word is good. Did anybody else have anything else they wanted to share? Anyone, anyone. Thank you yourself. We thank God. We thank God. If you amen. do. Amen. 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 Right, Elder. amen. amen. I uh, just wanted to get on and just say that I agreed with everything that you all said. So y'all basically said everything that I had written down. I mean, like word for word, word for word. So that means that we are all in agreement with it because what was said is so true. And it's the way that, you know, we have to live our life. We have to die to self and live for God. So in order to die to self, then there are some things that needs to be done. I had wrote down, you have to allow, you have to allow, you have to trust, and you have to remind yourself that you are a new creation in Jesus Christ. That's yeah. one of the things that we have to do. But the first thing we have to do is we have to first die to self. And a lot of times dying to self is a hard thing because we're so used to taking control of everything that we do Amen. in our life. You know, we used to being the leader. And when you are not the leader, it's hard to just let go of the things that you used to control and which is like your environment, your yeah. home, your own life. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's hard, but you can find yourself doing it because of the Holy Spirit. As life it. is a choice itself. Yes. You have to make up in your mind, not yeah. my mind, in your mind. Yes. That the word of God says that you have to renew your mind. That's right. In order to renew your mind, you have to go to the word of God. You have to trust it. You have to believe it. And you have to study it in order to know what he's saying. And I like the point that they talked about when they said slave. Yeah. Now, we know that a slave back in the day, slaves, didn't, they were not able to, to do what they wanted to do. They couldn't pick and choose what right. they wanted to do. They had to do exactly and only what the master said. That's so right. that's the same thing that we got to do. We can't pick and choose. Right. We got to do only what the master says. Amen. So that's another thing that, that you know, we have to uh, put in our forefront. And as y'all was saying something about, uh, I think y'all said, okay, whatever. I wrote that down too. It says, whatever you feed this body, yes. if you feed it cursing and yes. uh, all the things of the world, Yes. or whatever that is not of God, that is not what God stands for and not who God is. He said that we are created in him. And did we not know that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost? That's so it. whatever we feed, as you said, whether we feed flesh or we feed spirit, 
is what's going to pump up our muscles. That's where yes. we're going to be strong. Yes. Yes. So we're going to be strong in that area. Yes. But we cannot because the plan is to be renewed by your mind. That's so it. we got to be renewed. We got to change from our selfish ways because yes. we are selfish oh, yes. and deny ourselves right. so that we can be disciplined, as That's we right. said. That's right. We have to we have to have set goals for ourselves. That's right. We have to remember that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not Lord. seen. We have to train our bodies, our mind, and our temple to do what is right. And we all in training when it comes to that. We all train it each and every day to get where we are. As I say, when I want to say something to my husband, like you ain't studying, you ain't reading. And God, and like I am or whatever, like I'm so great, you know, but those are the things that I want to do. So I have to train myself that God says, you are not the one that's going to make the change. I am the one that's going to make the change. So by you talking, you just destroying the whole thing. So we have to make up in our mind that when God says he has a plan, yes. he says, I have the, I have the plans for you, right? God said he knows what he has for us. So we got to stay in training mode at all times because that's the only way we're going to win this fight. That's Amen. the truth. Amen. Amen. That's we the want to go ahead and wrap up with already 17 after, I believe. I Amen. hope everyone enjoyed Bible study today. I, hope, I pray we got something out of it that you walked Amen. away with some nuggets. Amen. Again, we do this so that we can apply this stuff to our lives. Yes. And then I just that we just talked about this stuff, but we're hearing the word the word says, don't be just a hero of the word, but be a doer. Amen. We pray that what you heard will allow you and yes. help you to be a doer. Yes. Amen. Amen. Sister Rhea, you mind praying us out? Thank you, Lord. I was thinking the same thing. Thank you, Jesus. I, you already unmuted. Go ahead. <laughs> and she was been a hang up. She was been a hang up for all y'all. Thank you, Lord. We were thinking that was on the same page. Amen. Okay. Lord help us. Yes, Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just uh, come to you tonight, thanking and praising you for your word, oh God. I pray that your word blessed and touched everyone tonight. And then we're able to apply it to our lives to glorify you in everything that we do, say, think, feel, hope for, pray for, can even imagine, oh God, that it all glorifies you. Yes. And that your light shines down on us, that others may see that um, you are the great I am, that yes. you are Alpha and Omega, oh God, the beginning and the end. Father God, we just thank you for this word tonight, for your word is true, your yes. promises are true. Yes. And answers are yes and amen unto you. This and all blessings we ask, believe, and receive in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Have bless a bless you. We love y'all. Amen. <laughs> if you can, hey, don't Pastor. forget to tune in yeah, tomorrow yeah. night. Tomorrow nights. Um, no, Thursday that's what night. I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Yes, Thursday night, set, um, 7 o'clock. Are we doing seven o'clock? Seven o'clock, we will be doing um, Q&A on single, save, and celibate for the journey of where we are. Um, sometimes we may be. But you in, don't have to be single to tune in. You don't have to in. be. No, you don't. We want everybody to tune in. We want questions. We want um, things that will empower us through how God has given us the victory and we can share with others how to be that much stronger in this journey of uh, whether you single save and celibate or single and newly single, um, whatever it is, it's God has answers that he's equipped us with. Tune in tomorrow at seven o'clock. God seven bless everybody. Amen. Bye. Love y'all. Bye. Bye. Where are all the kids at tonight? <laughs> I don't know where the baby's at. Ain't nobody baby said bye to us. Jamila must be right. in the bed. We saw, I right. saw, um, I saw Bailey. You saw Bailey? I didn't uh, see she, Bailey. She was, yeah, I saw Bailey a little bit, but uh, she was on she was on mute. I didn't see Bailey. Bailey, <laughs> Bailey in the bed. She ain't get back up now. <laughs> <laughs> get, oh, sorry, mother. Sorry. When I really start using that ice crusher, I guess she might. Oh, man. Have you used it yet? I, yes. Yes. <laughs> Love it. It was perfect. Perfect. Yes, yes.
<laughs> yes, Lord. That'll work. Love y'all. All right. Bye bye. All right. Bye, -bye. bye y'all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That was pretty good. <laughs>